Assalamualaikum and uh, salam sejahtera. So we continue with the topic rheumatoid arthritis uh, with the case study. Dr. Farman is a 61 year old retired bowling coach. Visited of stiffness in both hands, knees and shoulders, especially in the morning. And the stiffness sometimes accompanied by pain uh, increasing in intensity over the f uh, over few weeks and he also has a limited joint function when he said that he cannot uh, really enjoy uh, gardening anymore during his free time mm. he was referred to rheumatology clinic for further follow-up okay and the uh, physical examination uh, reveals bilateral symmetrical swelling tenderness and warmth of the metacarp metacarpophalangeal MCP and proximal interphalangeal PIP joints of the hands. Okay. He smokes uh, one to two uh, packs a day. So he was a, he is a smoker. He has a diabetes mellitus for five years and currently taking tablitin and metformin. So the family history One of the uh, disease uh, related to autoimmune. Okay, so I mentioned before the physical examination uh, reviews MCP and PIP uh, swelling. So the for the lab findings, the HP is uh, slightly re slightly low, but it's still okay. Uh, uh, ESR is increased. Okay, so this is an uh, increase. And what about the CRP is also increased. The ESR is electrocyte sedimentary rate and C reactive uh, is also one of the marker for inflammation. The hematocrit, uh, the, okay, the hemoglobin is, oh, there's two hemoglobin here. So the rheumatoid fa factor uh, was also tested and it was positive. So uh, it, the, it indicates that this patient is having rheumatoid arthritis based on the uh, RF factor, RF test, which is positive and also the signs of inflammation in the uh, ESR and CRP results. So the diagnosis is uh, rheumatoid arthritis. So I ask you what is the pathophysiology of rheumatoid arthritis so make sure you do your homework and uh, identify what are the what are the um, processes that occurs in uh, especially the inflammatory markers uh, associated with the uh, with the pathophysiology the sign and symptom of this condition okay so what what are the clinical presentations and laboratory findings consistent with rheumatoid arthritis in this patient? So the first thing is joint pain, of course. Okay, so these are the most common uh, complaint of the patient. The pain might be associated, uh, might be uh, um, presented with stiffness as well in multiple joints. So classically, as illustrated by him, the uh, the presentation is symmetrical involving wrist, um, proximal interphalangeal joints and metacar meta metacarpophalangeal joints. So these both joints are uh, having a swelling and a pain. And often also stiffness is one of the hallmark uh, symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis. It can be defined as the sensation or tightening of the involved joint usually occurs after inactivity. For example, waking up in the morning and then he has a problem of uh, stiffness and cannot really move his uh, fingers after a while. And swelling is also caused by the inflammation of the joint. So it can cause warmth and loss of function on that area. So that's the symptom. And the, uh, another... So for the lab findings, uh, the CRP and ESR is increased, suggests inflammatory uh, disease, and the rheumatoid factor is positive, so that's indicative of autoimmune disease. So the goal of therapy in this patient is to maximize uh, functional status, good maintenance, or improvement of symptoms, 
and preserve joint function and also prevent deformity. So non-pharmacological um, non-pharmacological uh, therapy for this patient is a plenty of rest to reduce inflammation. Um, especially when experience, experiencing acute inflammation, okay? But the daytime rest period should be limited to 30 to 60 minutes each because the prolonged rest can also induce rapid loss in strength and endurance. So, uh, in other words, the, uh, the patients need to rest when the, the swelling of pain is, is intense, but make sure that he also have a The, the exercise or the movement to 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 uh, ensure that the joint is uh, did not lose the the strength and also the the function and splinting of joint is typically prescribed throughout the day and night during periods of active inflammation to reduce the uh, inflammation in that area and and also Passive uh, ROM exercise, as uh, mentioned in the lecture, regular aerobic exercise such as uh, cycling, swimming, and walking. Okay, this is to enhance the muscle function and to preserve the joint uh, function as well. And overall, physical and occupational therapies can provide variable assistance to the patients with compromised activities or daily um, activities of daily living. So this. Um, the act, this is actually the active uh, ROM exercise. The passive one is the uh, the one that the patient uh, is being assisted by other people, okay? like rehabilitation or any physical uh, or occupational therapy. And also important is emotional support from family members and friends. Okay. So the doctor prescribed him with methotrexate 7.5 mg once a week and naproxen 250 mg BD. So next plan uh, for a follow-up is after 3 months. So um, discuss, about the, discuss about the choice of therapy given to Mr. Suparman. So DMARD treatment should be initiated immediately for him. So that's what uh, it was. Uh, he was being uh, handled so far. So the DMARD treatment was initiated immediately uh, as he has a zero positive uh, disease, which means the rheumatoid factor is positive, and he has no other comorbidities which contraindicate uh, him to any of the DMARD. Okay. So he should be given. Uh, he can actually can be given with a combination therapy of uh, methotrexate and sulfasalazine, and uh, depending on the severity. Okay, folic acid should also be prescribed at five um, milligram weekly because of the treatment of methotrexate. So if you learn uh, in oncology. Uh, lecture, if the patient was given methotrexate, uh, they should also be given a supplemental folic acid. For the ends, for the NSAID, uh, naproxen can be an option. So this is actually the best option due to a low risk of uh, cardiovascular events as compared to the other NSAIDs. And uh, because Mr. Superman already have a risk factor of having diabetes, so naproxen is the right choice. Because diabetes is also one of the risk factors for cardiovascular disease. And corticosteroid is not recommended due to effect of blood glucose level and uh, it may complicate diabetes in this patient. Okay, corticosteroid might impair the blood glucose. Monitoring parameters, uh, we look at the efficacy of um, the treatment using the RF level, CRP, ESR level, signs and symptoms reducing or not, and also X-ray to look at the joints. The safety, uh, we have to uh, look at the um, side effect of methotrexate, the signs and symptoms of bleeding, uh, nausea, vomiting, anorexia, gastric pain, 
uh, melena melena um, the uh, melanic stool the stool blood in stool and also renal function how should the dose of methotrexate be adjusted if there is no response uh, team in this patient but if there is no objective response it's one to two months the dose can be increased to 15 milligrams per week or 5 milligrams uh, every three hours for three doses only for that week for, for each week 12 additional weeks okay. and if there is no response uh, is seen at this time after the 12 additional weeks then the dose can be increased to a maximum of 25 milligrams per week uh, or the dose can be administered as subcutaneous or IM injection to, to address any bioavailability concern or uh, the same dose can be continued for a longer time instead of just 12 additional weeks or another DMARD can be added to methotrexate or methotrexate can be uh, exchanged or substituted with other DMARD. So discuss the cardiovascular risk for Mr. Superman and the preventive measures. So rheumatoid arthritis uh, should be considered as disease in which cardiovascular risk is elevated because of both an increased prevalence of traditional cardiovascular factors and the inflammatory burden of this uh, patient. And some more he is having diabetes mellitus which is also a risk factor for CV event. And to, do to lower that risk, Adequate control of arthritis, arthritis disease activity is necessary and encourage him to stop smoking, consider initiate a lipid lowering drug for example statin and also make sure he um, comply with any medication for diabetes mellitus that he has been given. And also avoid the, um, the NSAIDs that might increase the risk of CV risk. The counselling points for Mr. Superman, uh, he should be explained about the expected outcome of the treatment and he must understand that it is not a, uh, this is not a short-term treatment. So the, the effect of DA, DMARD can be seen after one or two months even and he has to be patient to see the effect. Although he, uh, it, the effect is not... Um, Immediate, he still need to continue taking the medication, and in the meantime, he can take the NSAID or steroid to reduce the reduce the the inflammation. But but specifically in this case, uh, steroid is not recommended for for him. It's just a NSAID to to cover for the pain. Okay, uh, and the importance of the um of this treatment is to delay the progression of the uh, disease we want to preserve the the joint function as much as possible and we want to delay any progression into um, a worse uh, or, or more severe condition okay and also ultimately we want to prevent any deformity of the joint due to uh, okay, um, this is all these are the reference. So if there is any question, please let me know. Thank you.